So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell you there champs. Now I'm gonna find out which is the best GPU or graphics card to go on an eGPU on this XPS 13 2-in-1, which has a temp generation Ice Lake CPUs. Now the great thing about the 10th generation Ice Lake CPU, the 10 nanometer version of course, because these are the real Ice Lake, is Thunderbolt 3 built in. So you're going to get lower latency. That's just a given. I mean, you don't have to go through a discrete controller. So that's a big bonus there for latency. I'm going to be testing the AMD 5700 XT and the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super Duper. And I will chuck the Radeon 7 in here because I actually had to chuck the Radeon 7 in here. I'll explain why in a sec. Now, when it comes to eGPUs, if you have an RTX 2070, 2080, don't bother. The graphics is powerful enough. You're not going to get much more, especially with these graphics cards. You're going to have to get a 2080 Ti. And even then, the, you know, I tested 2080 Ti on the laptop with an RTX 2080 and it was actually faster with the 2080 than it was with the 2080 eGPU. That was content creation. But, you know, you don't get much bang for buck, even with these graphics graphics card if you have an RTX 2070 2080 this is for you know ultra books like this XPS 13 2 and 1 or any ultra book that has a Thunderbolt 3 or even XPS 15 it doesn't have the super powerful RTX 2070 graphics it has you know GTX 1650 these are the sort of laptops that you'll gain with the new GPU and specifically these graphics cards now with a Mac Unfortunately, the 5700 XT is not supported in Mac OS yet, so hopefully that's coming soon. So when it does, I'll yeah, do a video on that. So let's get stuck into it. Let's first go to gaming, because a lot of people want to know gaming. So this is with the XPS 13 2 one 10th generation Ice Lake CPUs, as I said, and it's not good news, because I actually had to pull out the Radeon 7. So here we have some benchmarks. Okay, so this one was taken with the 5700 XT, this is with the Radeon 7. Where are the GPU scores? I'll show you Fire Strike in a sec. Where are the GPU scores for the RTX 2070 Super? Well, it wouldn't work with gaming. Would work in Premiere, but with this temp generation CPU, the XPS 13 tool one and the current drivers, it would not work in gaming. For some reason, I'll actually show you this Fire Strike benchmark. You can see here, the RTX 2070 Super is there, but it's reporting as GPU 2. And this is actually the Fire Strike score for the Iris graphics because obviously it wasn't using the RTX 2070 Super. I don't know why that is. I even disabled Iris graphics and still it just wouldn't work in gaming. Nvidia have just dropped a new driver, so I've checked that again. And this XPS 13 Tool One has had a new chipset driver. So you know, 10th generation, you're going to have to maybe have some firmware upgrades. Maybe Nvidia have to do something with the drivers. For gaming specifically with these 10th generation, of course, this will work on, you know, a normal laptop like an XPS 15, something like that. But with this 10th generation or specifically with this XPS 13 2 and one just gaming won't work with the RTX 2070 Super. So if you did want to know what the Fire Strike score for the Iris graphics are, this is it, like 3000. So wasn't working. Now, I actually tested the 5700 XT with the XPS 13 via eGPU and these were the results. And I'm looking at the results, I'm doing GTA 5, and I'm like, why? And I did restart and do it again, don't worry about that, why? 60 frames per second with a 5700 XT, are you kidding me? This is 1080p, these are all 1080p high settings, okay? That's wrong. Witcher 3, 70 frames per second, 1080p, that's wrong. 60 frames per second again, Witcher, like... What's going on? And I restarted and the same thing happened again. I wasn't getting the FPS that I should be getting. So even the AMD 5700 XT was having issues with this specific laptop. So I put in the Radeon 7 because the Super Duper wasn't working. So I just thought, what the hell is going on? Something's going wrong. And yes, boom, straight away when I put that in, I'm getting the frames that I should be getting. So these are all 1080p, 114 frames per second, DSX Mankind Divided. 84 frames per second GTA 5, Witcher 3, you know, 1080p high, 111 frames, and Overwatch, 153 frames. Now, this was just a quick benchmark, but this will give you an idea of, you know, the framage you're going to get 1080p high settings with this Ultrabook. You're getting killer FPS, okay? This is 1080p high, so you can definitely game on an Ultrabook. 
and you know when you're getting up 80 90 over 100 frames per second 1080p high you've got to be happy with that now if we have a look here at the five strike score with the radeon 7 which is on the right and the 5700 xt on the left you can see there's not much difference in the gpu score because there really isn't that much difference between these two gpus the, the radeon 7 is still fastest amd card but you can see 22,000 gpu 21,000 gpu but it's a much higher score like 13,000 versus you know 16,000 so again this is probably why this wasn't performing in the gaming because there's obviously something wrong you can see there 5700 xt rx 5700 and this is the radeon 7 here you can see that and yeah you, you can see it's getting much higher physics score and combined score and you can see it's much higher there compared to that so you look there's a big difference combined score you know 4700 versus 7000 so obviously the drivers or just like something on the radeon it doesn't like something with the 2070 super and it doesn't like something with the 5700 xt so i don't know what that is that's just the infancy of you know ice lake the chipset maybe the vendors have to do something with the drivers like the gpu vendors whatever it is that's the state of it at the moment with this xps 13 2 in one but they all work with content creation so if i have a look here all right i'll just punch in there so on the right hand side is the 2070 super on the left hand side we have the amd rx 5700 xt now you can see there the 5700 xt has a higher score and you think well why would this be isn't premiere supposed to be good with cuda what's going on here well it's very surprising isn't it but you, what you can see here is that's the overall score if we look at live playback so 48 versus 49 on the rtx 2070 so radeon 5700 slightly less playback score than the rtx 2070 super i assume this is where cuda is good this Puget system benchmark tests a lot of things it tests gpu cpu so testing all those sort of bottlenecks with the eGPU. it does heavy cpu effects heavy gpu effects gpu rendering everything different codecs and the rtx 2070 super does playback slightly better than the 5700 XT, but it's like marginal. That's with the margin of error there. And I presume that's because some of the GPU effects are using CUDA. So that's where it gets that little bit of an advantage with the live playback score. But when it comes to export, you see there's a little bit of difference there with the 5700 versus the rtx 2070 super that's out of margin of error territory there it's certainly faster with the amd 5700 xt so that's interesting i did test them with photoshop as well there's no need to use an eGPU for photoshop it really doesn't make that much difference i will get the radeon 7 score up here though and if we have a look here the radeon 7 is on the right now and the 5700 xt is on the left boom just smashes it absolutely smashes both the rtx 2070 super duper and the 5700 xt so it must like that hbm memory 16 gigs you know it smashes it in playback it smashes it in in export the radeon 7 is the king 16 gigabytes of hbm is killer and yeah it's like a hundred more like basically so yeah the radeon 7 is the king I would definitely say if you're doing content creation, the AMD 5700 XT is the way to go for content creation. If you're using Premiere, it might be different if you use Resolve or something like that. It's a shame I was having the issues with that. I will do these updates to the XPS 13 and the new graphics drivers, and I will test again for the full review. Stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to put up this quick video just to give you an idea. You know, which one's better, 5700 XT or RTX 2070 Super? Well, it looks like save your money if you're doing Premiere, get the 5700 XT. You probably can't get the Radeon 7, so yeah, that thing's killer. Like, I'll never sell that Radeon 7 with that, you know, 16 gigabytes HBM. That's a freaking amazing graphics card. I reckon it's even better than 2080 Ti. All right, that's better for gaming, but overall for content creation and stuff, that 16 gigabytes HBM, it's just friggin' awesome. And once Mac supports Navi, I will test these GPUs, obviously not the NVIDIA one, on the Mac as well. And I will test these with the XPS 15 for specifically gaming, which one's better out of those two. But this is with the temp generation, 13 inch XPS 13 2 in 1. Let me know what you guys think. Temp generation, Thunderbolt built in. It's going to be a lot better once it's all figured out. Uh, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.